reading slump, the two most dreaded words for a reader. I saw this tweet that said, there's nothing more frustrating than wanting to read but not being in the mood to read anything, right after realizing I was in a slump, and it perfectly described how I felt. So, come help me get out of a reading slump with a few different attempts. This is what I'm reading. It says I'm borrowing it. And this is what I'm reading, but I already told you that. And I'm only 15 pages in. Are <laughs> you borrowing that book since March? <laughs> Shh, don't let your viewers know. <laughs> exposed, Shaw's exposed. What is that? What is that? Okay, so this video has evolved from what it started out as, as just a summer vlog. Yeah, this was just gonna be like a summer beachy vlog. I'm going to the pool today, that's why I'm in a bathing suit. I'm going to my godmother's house and she has a pool. I'm driving to Long Island with my mom. I'm not having, why am I talking while doing this? I'm having like people coming as well. It's kind of like a late birthday graduation get together thing. So I thought I would do like a summary vlog, but turns out I think I'm in a reading slump. I haven't really read. <laughs> at all this week. I've tried reading a little bit and I'm not feeling anything that I'm reading. So you will have just seen me at the beach a couple days ago starting the Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand and I'm actually liking the book so far. I'm only 40 pages in. I like her writing. I'm liking kind of the direction we're going in and the way that she's presenting the story and introducing us to the different characters that we'll be following and I really love the premise of it. So I am liking this and I think I'm gonna try to read it today on the way to Long Island. Maybe if I get some time to like sit by the pool and read, but like it's gonna be people so we're gonna be hanging out. So I don't know that I'm gonna really read much while I'm around people, but I think I'm in a slump. I'm in such a big mood reading mood <laughs> and my specific mood right now is horror I really really want to read a horror book so I have some Stephen Graham Jones books from the library that I can start but I think I'm gonna just try to read a little bit more of this today I'm not gonna hold myself to this book long term because the thing is when I'm home or when I'm just sitting at home I feel like reading but I don't feel like picking this up and I don't really feel like picking up anything around me so this week I'm just gonna like kind of mood read because this isn't really getting out of a slump it kind of is because I haven't read or finished a book this week it's more preventative preventing a reading slump because that's what I need to do. I need to be preventative because once I'm in a slump, there's no pulling me out of that. There's no pulling me out of that. Otherwise, I will let you know what I move on to because I don't think I'm gonna stick with the five star weekend. Like, I don't think I'm gonna see it out right now. I do plan think I'm gonna finish it at some point, like soon, but I think I'm gonna wanna switch gears to something else first and then get back to it because I'm just, I have a very specific mood in mind. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I'm tired as frick. I'm home from the pool. My AC is on. Everything's wrong. I read like maybe 10 pages of the five star weekend. I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna read something else. Hey, so it is now Monday. I'm definitely feeling slumpy. I like haven't properly sat down and read in days or practically most of this week. I picked up My Heart is a Chainsaw as my potential attempt number two. And I don't know if this is what I should read right now. I don't know, I was reading it last night after work. So maybe I was just tired. I'm gonna try a few different options. I'm gonna run to the library again. Like the library, you are my bestie. You can give me so many things without having to commit. So I'm probably gonna go to the library and maybe check out two other books. They're both horror. One is a Paul Tremblay book that I've been really wanting to read, but low-key I'm leaning towards another book and that's a Grady Hendrix book because his books are so easy to read and I haven't read this one and I feel like it could have the potential to be my favorite of his. I have to go run a few errands and then I'm literally going into the city tonight. So I have kind of a lot to do today. My cousin is also here. I don't think she's awake yet. She's staying at my mom's. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the library. I just like have no clue what I'm in the mood for and that is like what a reading slump is. I'm at the point where I really do want to read. Like I want to consume a story. I just don't know what I want to read. I don't know if this is what I want to read. The writing style isn't like bad. Like there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't know if it's a writing style that will help me right now.
Well, hey guys. Okay, so it's been a couple days and I have really good news to report. I'm really enjoying the final girl support group. I'm, I think less than 200 pages in. I'm on page 191 right now. And I read the first 100 pages of this in one day, which it could be really good for some people. It could be not as good for some people. It's like in the middle for me, but in a reading slump where I haven't read more than like 20 pages at a time, 100 pages in a day is so good. This got me immediately. I'm loving this concept about final girls in like tragedies. Obviously tragedies happen to them and they were the last surviving people. And the thing about this book is obviously it's very horror movie inspired because like the final girl concept is like a horror movie concept. It is actually so fun because all of the final girls in this like support group in this main cast are like the final girls from the famous franchises the first one that was mentioned as you're like reading the main character is describing like the things that happened to each girl or each woman because now they're like older and the first one was like oh that sounds a bit like friday the 13th that's cool like obviously like it's inspired by these things and the next one i was like no that sounds exactly like scream and then the next one it was like oh that's halloween that's that's nightmare on elm street that one hasn't even really come up yet but i know it is but i know that that could be annoying for some people like how exactly it's referencing horror movies and like the inspiration i am enjoying it as a horror movie fan like it is really fun and i might be right that this could end up being my favorite grady hendrix this is literally my fifth grady hendrix book i've read horror store my best friend's exorcism southern book club's guide to slaying vampires and how to sell a haunted house and they're literally all like three stars like they could range a bit in the three star range this one could be higher so i would be really happy and excited for that to happen because that's why i keep reading his books i think his concepts are all so fun and i enjoy his writing a lot but his execution in the end and conclusions are never really my favorites but i really respect him as a writer especially with this book seeing like how much he loves horror and seeing it like be put into this book oh i'm appreciating it so much so i want to sit down today and read a whole bunch of it we will see but i am really really enjoying this like it's a very fast and propelling read so attempt number two is going well but i don't know if i'm gonna end the video after finishing this book or if i'm gonna try to move on to something else as well to make sure that I'm not really in a slump because I still while I'm still really enjoying this book I feel like it is getting a little hard for me to just like immediately pick it up or like have that motivation to pick it up anyway that's it for this update and I'm gonna read and do some other things too I'm really enjoying the final girl support group and that makes me so happy holy Jesus it is so hot today I do have a couple of updates I have the AC on because I just got to my mom's and I am I'm dog sitting my dog Winnie for the day and the AC wasn't on when I got home. You probably hear her panting because she's very hot. We just had to walk back to my mom's because I took her out for a bit. But the final girl support group by Grady Hendrix. I did end up finishing this this morning. I read, yesterday was the 4th of July. I actually got up, like read like so much of the book yesterday morning before like my plans for 4th of July. I went to Long Island. I went to my godmother's house with some friends and my sister and we swam in the pool all day. It was so nice. But I read up to, I read up to the point where I was this morning. So I literally read up to having 30 pages left in the book and then didn't finish it yesterday. So I finished it this morning. I was hoping to maybe finishing it, finish it yesterday, but I ended up really enjoying it but the conclusion was totally fine with me the one thing i will say is uh the twist of the ending i can't fault the book i didn't see it coming actually i kind of i kind of figured this was where it was going when one twist happened but then when it was being explained i was like yo i'm pretty sure a twist where i've seen this happen came out after this book so this book did it first but i saw the other thing first so I was like, it doesn't feel original, but it was because it came out before the other thing that did something similar. Not the book's fault, didn't really hinder like my rating. So I still ended up really liking it. I'm giving it four stars. Definitely my favorite Grady Hendrix. I think that the concept was really fun. I still really enjoy his writing and I love like seeing the callbacks to famous horror franchises. It was just a fun time. It was just a very fun and enjoyable ride. I feel like my slump is still here because I kind of just feel little motivation to pick up a book right now. And I'm like wondering if I should just try the wait it out method, but I want to film videos so we're gonna see what I do today but I'm 
low-key feeling a fantasy. And I checked out Immortal Longings from the library by Chloe Gong and I'm kind of low-key intrigued. So I might just start it and see how I'm feeling and see if this will be like good for me to read right now. But I'm also debating just going back to the Five Star Weekend because after having a super summery day yesterday and getting like my horror kick satisfied, I might just go back to this. Low-key, I think I might just do that. Hello, Quickest of updates because this is, first of all, quite an angle. I'm looking down at you, but I did. I'm picking up the five star weekend. Like I was already 50 pages in and then I started reading it yesterday. I'm definitely still slumpy. Like that's the point in this video, obviously, but I'm definitely still feeling it. Cause literally I don't like to have anything on when I'm reading, but my attention span is like really weird right now. So I literally had, you will have seen Zavid the movie commentary youtuber his like scream videos on in the background because i've seen them multiple times before so i just kind of had them on in the background and then i continued reading the five star weekend i'm almost 100 pages in i'm hoping to get a little bit more red but i'm about to go to work also the ac is still on i'm hot so yeah so i'm reading the five star weekend and i'm really liking it like it's super it's really interesting this works for me right now because right now kind of wish i had a different life i don't want to go to work today <laughs> this is fun for me to pretend like i am on nantucket with all this drama and like not having to worry about money i mean there are characters in this who do have to worry about money so uh, you know it's not all peaches and cream it's not all rainbows and butterflies but this is what i want to read and already it's making me want to read more of her books my best friend just read the hotel nantucket and really liked it as well but i'm i'm buying I'm this right now. I'm vibing this. I do still want to pick up Immortal Longings though. So maybe if I'm still feeling slumpy, I could try that again after. I didn't even try it, but yeah, this is what I'm reading now. Good day, people. It's Monday. I went to the library. I sat down, guys, for like two hours and I finished the five star weekend. This is just in there so I wouldn't lose it. I almost left it on the chair at the library. I finished the five star weekend. I had about like a hundred. 140 pages left or something like that. I really, really, really enjoyed this. I'm so glad I picked it back up. And I need that little horror diversion before getting into this because I just wasn't really like feeling like picking up this story, but I'm so happy I read this. I don't even think it's like a five star book. I think it's probably like four stars, 4.25. I loved it. Like I don't, I, I'm not like newly endeared to this book and these characters, even though I did really enjoy the characters, but there was something about Ellen Hildebrand's writing and the way she sets up a story that fully like got me. There's something about the way she writes and the way she makes these characters feel so real that it like, it kind of altered something within me, especially the writer in me. Cause I don't know if I mentioned this, like I gr just graduated from college with my creative writing and literature degree. So I enjoy writing and I would like to write something at some point in my life. And this just kind of sparked something in me. I really appreciate when people can write characters or write these feelings that are so relatable. And that's always something that I've wanted to be able to do because there are things in my life that I don't see all the time. And I want to be able to put them down onto paper and have people like kind of understand me, but also understand themselves within my words. So that has been quite the revelation or feeling that this book evoked. So I am at a crossroads because I kind of think my reading slump is over because I just like blew through the rest of this book and I really was like invested in continuing reading it and I want to read more after this. Like I'm really excited to read more. I'm, I'm at a crossroads because I think I might want to pick up another Ellen Hildebrand but I might want to read something else. I think it's probably my best bet to just like go right into another Ellen Hildebrand. Like I own another one. I own 28 Summers. Cause this, I don't know. Like I really, really enjoyed this. And I just really want to keep reading her writing and keep reading this setting and see what else she does with it. Since she has so many books set in the same place. Like I just want to see what they're all like. I think I might continue with this video. I don't know. I low key feel like I don't need to. I think my reading slump has been defeated, but like I kind of want to just like get into another book and then feel like secure in that. So I think we'll probably do like one little extra update, but I don't know that I need to finish another book to complete this video. I'm going to my mom's now. I'm going to have dinner there and then maybe do a couple of things and I'm going to bring the other Helen Hildebrand. I think my other options for reading next were Immortal Longing by Chloe Gong because I still really want to get into that book. Like I'm really interested to see what that setting is like, but I don't I don't 
don't think I'm in the mood for fantasy right now. Um, and then my other option was a reread but I don't know if I'm gonna do it yet. But low key, that could be a direction that I go in just cause of like the vibe that my brain's in. So we'll see. I'm gonna bring the Ellen Hildebrand and then if I pick it up, I pick it up. If I don't, then that's it. I will let you know what happens next, okay? Okay guys. Oh. Okay. This is officially the end of this video because I have really good news. I'm like so certain that I am out of my reading slope. I did it. I literally did it. I want to do a recap, but I feel like my update should be like current and then we'll just go back and talk about everything. As you probably saw, and as I hinted or mentioned, I decided to just pick up another Ellen Hildebrand after finishing um, the Five Star Weekend. And I picked up 28 Summers because that is the other book that I got. I bought both of these books on my birthday. <sighs> The Five Star Weekend, I think, is like a four star read. I really enjoyed it, but there was just, I, I just could tell that it wasn't like, it wouldn't be like a my favorite Ellen Hildebrand. Like, I knew that if I just kept going, I would find a favorite Hil Ellen Hildebrand. Me saying this when I'm on my second Ellen Hildebrand, but I have a really, really good feeling about this book, you guys. I'm 152 pages in and I am obsessed. I like, I pick it up and I cannot stop reading it. I only stopped reading last night because I worked yesterday and I was tired, but I stayed up until like after midnight and read like 60 more pages, maybe like 70, because I think I read to page 80 yesterday morning. And as I just showed you, I'm annotating this book and I don't annotate like regularly. First of all, I'm scared of annotating a book on my first read in case I'm like too overexcited about it in the beginning and then I don't end up loving it, but I just have a really good feeling about this book and like I just need to show you this one stretch of pages. Like this is literally one page after the other and it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so you can see my underlines here. And I'm going backwards. I mean, I guess I could show you the other way, but I mean, there's only one little underline here, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's like not it. Like I'm sure there might be something over here. No, there isn't. I just cannot stop underlining in this book and interacting or reacting to the things happening. Oh my God. This follows two people who decide to meet one weekend every summer for 28 summers. They don't like make the pact for 28 summers, but this book follows 28 of those summers or 20, they're 28 summers. So it starts in 1993 and it just continues on after that through marriage and other life things. So it is about an affair, but the way that Ellen Hildebrand writes the connection between these two characters and just writes these two characters and the things that they're doing is so good. It is so, so good. I already love Mallory and I already like feel like I relate to her so much. Like I'm eating it up, dude. And Jake is the other character. I love and hate him because of some of the things that he does. So I am so excited to continue reading this book, but I don't think that I need to finish it to classify that. I am out of my reading slump because I'm just gonna blow through this. Like I know it. That is the last attempt for this video. And that definitely is the one that like did it. Like I am fully good. I'm fully out of it. So let's recap what I read in this video and how they helped in getting me out of my slump. Well, I guess technically the first book that I picked up was The Five Star Weekend, but I only got like 50 pages in and I knew this wasn't really what I was in the mood for at that moment even though I was enjoying the setup and the writing and the premise of this story. So I moved on to The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix and this book actually really helped me because it satiated my craving for horror and I really enjoyed this. Absolutely my favorite Grady Hendrix, four stars, like really good book. I loved the concept and I still, I've always really enjoyed his writing, but I did especially love it in this book, especially because the conclusion worked for me. Like it wasn't like a mind blowing conclusion, but it wasn't anything that kind of 
have left me disappointed or feeling like unsatisfied or anything like that. And then I went back to the Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand and this really helped me because it is a really light and easy read while also having a lot of depth to it. And I really liked the characters. Again, like I was enjoying the premise, but then picking it back up, like really good for the fun summary read while still getting me super invested. In the end, it ended up really helping me because it kind of really was motivating me and inspiring me with my own writing. So that really helped. And it wasn't really something I was looking for or expecting from this book, but the setting was just so tangible. Like obviously she lives on Nantucket, but everything about it was just like, I was transported to this weekend with these characters and the setting, but Oh, it was just so much better in this book. Like it is, oh my God, I love, I love the setup of this book so much. The thing about this book that I think I'm already liking a lot more is the setup, the premise, and the characters. Like, I mean, the setup and the premise is really good. And I also liked the setup and the premise of the Five Star Weekend, but the way that she is telling this story is so good because we follow them throughout the years. Like we start in 1993 and we follow them like from their early 20s or mid in their 20s into their adulthood and further like I'm not really there yet I'm still in their 20s because I'm still kind of early on I'm in like the sixth summer we are focusing on Mallory and Jake mainly and that's one thing about it is that we get to really stick with these characters and like grow to love them but also like immediately love them from the get so that's what I'm loving and oh it's just it, it's so good this will be a very highly rated book and that makes me so happy. So finding a really good book will help get you out of a reading slump, 100%. But you're not always guaranteed to do that. I got very lucky with this book. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so glad I'm out of the slump and I'm so excited to read more. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, people.